peace to the family. Yep, I just finished training. Some people that hired me to help them get their game tight. But now that I'm done training, I just wanted to have this build. I'm going to be doing a live stream tomorrow. And the conversation that I want to do kind of is a precursor. Tomorrow I think I'm going to do something on algae. Because if you eat the right types of algae, you won't need to really go anywhere else for food for the most part. So we want to have that conversation tomorrow. The brown algae, the red algae, and the blue-green algae. We want to have that conversation tomorrow. That's going to be a dope conversation. Seaweed. But you know, the, the water world has forests too. Just like you got forests out here. And if you're talking about eating food, you want to, you can get most of the vitamins. You can get all your vitamins and minerals. Let me say it like that proudly. You can get all your vitamins and minerals from the oldest plants on the planet. Now you're looking at algae like, let's say, kelp. That's been around between 5 to 23 million years ago. And older than that is what? Older than kelp is blue-green algae. That's been around more than 23 million years ago. So you want to go to the original source of protein, the original source of calcium. As an example, we'll go into that tomorrow. It's going to be dope. Just want to just wanna share knowledge with you. And go super hard because now I'm excited. Having talked to meat eaters with these misconceptions, you gotta understand you're getting recycled protein. If you don't know what amino acid is, and this would make all this would make sense why so much misinformation is going out. So what happens is when we talk about the prototype of the first cell, when we talk about amoebas and protozoas, right? First animal, protozoa, first animal. When we talk about protozoas and we talk about amoebas, we start talking about organelles and mitochondria. What was the first cells feeding off of? When we talk about eukaryotic organisms and prokaryotic organisms, prokaryotic being those without a nucleus. What were the first organisms consuming? First organisms was not consuming animals because animals wasn't made yet. Think about it. <laughs> the first organisms were not animals. Okay? And what did they consume? Plants. Sunlight. Air and water. Those are the necessities. So why do we deviate? I don't get it. So when you're looking at an animal, an animal is creating protein models to sustain itself that have its inception and consuming plants. That's how this thing goes. That's how the game goes. That's how it works. That's exactly how it works. So in other words, amino acids are monomers of protein. Just like nucleotides are monomers of DNA. Just like let's see triglycerides are monomers of lipids. So basically molecules of the same work with each other to create more profound bio molecules in the body. Okay? So that's how this thing goes. That's how it works. So you guys got to keep that in mind. These Jews always bringing that music. It's hip hop. Can't even do my streams because these Jews be playing all this hip hop. Yeah, I be balling with them. They be doing a good job. Be having fun. This make you think the world could be a better place when you come in this area. My daughter's over there. I was just finished training that young little Jewish girl and her aunt. She's very good. She's a quick learner. Real positive. I see my daughter grinding with her right now. She's cool. But anyway, <laughs> that's what we on right now. What we on is 
just because we're going to get to the subject matter because this is a short stream. Just because your grandma lived to be 95 years old, since when does age determine your health? Meat eaters, all of a sudden, every meat eater is coming out of the woodworks. Yo, my aunt's this old. Yo, my grandmother lived this old. Yo, every everybody all of a sudden has no one in their family with arthritis, hypertension, blood sugar problems, high blood pressure, kidney stones, dementia, uh, what else, diabetes, several forms of cancer. Suddenly nobody has any body in the black community that's sick all of a sudden you know what everyone's saying yeah my grandmother's this old i don't get into that conversation because then people are gonna get emotional because now if i ask did your grandma get her hip replaced how's her bone density now i gotta get all in her business and hope something's wrong with her so i don't like that it's like be, keep it real people and listen we talking about quality not quantity what good is living to 90 years old if you got a whole bunch of health issues? So stop telling me that somebody is, uh, my grandmother lived to be 101 years old. That is not the model for health. The model for health is if you're able to enjoy yourself. Dr. Sabi was 82 years old and he made a baby with a 28 year old woman. See, tell me that. Tell me your, your grandmother was 90 something years old and she still was making babies. Tell me that. Tell me your grandfather was over 90 and he was still making babies. See, now I'm going to pay attention and be like, yo, word? But don't tell me they made it to 90. That means nothing to me. So what you made it to 90? So what you made it to 95? That means nothing to me. I want to see, can you still come on this court and play around? Can you drop on your knees? Pause like Dr. Sabi. He used to just fall, boom. And you would hear, he would fall on wood, cement, boom. Like, yo, that's what that sea moss do. So come on, man. We got to keep it real. We got to stop all of this. Anything to top the vegan. I'm not knocking you if you eat meat. Well, that's not, actually, I am. But it, I'm doing it out of love. Doing it out of love. Because we want to become high-performance humans. That's it. High-performance. That's what I'm talking about. You guys want to call yourself gods and everything, right? And then you got to rise above the convention of the average human's approach towards existence. I'm talking about the God diet. Okay, I'm talking about that supreme being diet. That's what I'm talking about. Something has to set you apart from the rest of humanity and those amongst your race. And that'd be the diet. We talking about having more clairvoyance, psychometry, intuition, telepathy. We talking about those vibes. Not just the five senses, but the nine senses that boil down. The five senses actually equal one sense filled, but the nine senses total give you perception. We talking about perception on a whole nother level. Not just any perception. A heightened perception. And that perception. And you know people think I make up these words. A perception. I meant that. That's the level we gotta take things to. You feel me? So I'm not knocking you. If you eat meat, it doesn't make you a bad human being. Can you live off of eating meat? No. You'll die off of eating meat. Because we dying from the time we come into this existence. It's just a matter of how, how we want to approach death. Are we going to, are we going to scientifically approach death? Because that's what we're talking about, death. We're talking about dying the best way we can, not living. We're going to live after this time. But guess what? <laughs> that's when the doctrine comes in. Because the food that you're eating is destroying your DNA. Like the heme iron that's inside of the meat. It destroys your DNA. And I'm going to go further into that in tomorrow's discourse. But if it's destroying your DNA, it's setting you up for failure when it comes to living. This is death. And you only use about 3% or they only uncoded or decoded 3% of the DNA. They realize 3% of it is pretty much active in this lifetime, in this existence, in this death time. The other 97% is active when you leave this physical form. So if 97% uh, if of 97 of your life commences in your death, 97% of your life begins in your death. So if the food you're eating is damaging your DNA, they're compromising your life. That's to come, not this one right here. 
if the food you're eating is destroying your DNA, it's destroying your opportunity to actually live. I hope no one's missing what I'm saying here. This is death. And the food you're eating is destroying your DNA. So it's compromising the integrity of the afterlife. Because 97% of your DNA isn't functional until this physical body ceases to exist. That's a whole nother conversation. That's why I don't, I don't even do that with people online. Because now I got to go into a whole bunch of information. I got to go into space physics. I got to go into biosemiotics. I got to go into autopoiesis. I got to go into microbial biology, bacteria, genetics. I got to go into uh, quantum chromo uh, thermodynamics. I got to go into a lot. Because those are where the correspondences are in the world's first scientific text. Namely, the Amduat, the Book of Gates. Then you got to go into the old kingdom of the pyramid text and work your way into the middle kingdom. Okay? When you get the coffin text. And then you go into the new kingdom. Okay? Which is the Pere Em Heru. Or the book of coming forth by day. Or the properly translated, not the book of the day. But Pakatisha Pama Wood, which is the ritual procession into the awakening. I don't play games with this. You may ask me, what do you be doing all this study for? To master this death. No, well, whether you realize it or not, to, to live for an eternity, you gotta work for it. That's what our ancestors taught. No cap. <laughs> I'm telling you this. This is real talk. You don't want to be a fruitarian. Fuck around, get diabetes, all that sugar in the fruits. Don't be avoiding no veggies. <laughs> don't be avoiding those veggies. No pardon. This is the sweat from balling. No cap. Word. Shit. So, you know, first thing we got to get over the hump is why we don't even like to use the word protein. I agree with Dr. Sabi. He ain't like using the word protein. I don't like it either. It's so deceptive. It's extremely deceptive. We should, we should qualify what we eat by acknowledging them based on amino acids. Facts. <clears throat> you know, when I debated that Negro... He was saying uh, he got he got anemia. People don't understand. People that are anemic. Hold on, real quick. People. People that are anemic. They get iron pills. But what they don't tell you is, it's not just a matter of iron deficiency. It's a matter of B12 deficiency. It's a matter of B12 deficiency. Because B12 helps you to absorb iron. So even if you're getting iron pills, these doctors will give you iron pills when you're anemic. You may find yourself very fatigued or even cold a lot. Very sleepy. But they'll give you iron pills and your body is not even properly absorbing it. Because rather than get to the root of the problem, which is the B12. <laughs> Rather than get to the root of the problem, which is the B12, they just tell you, hey, you're anemic and you're iron deficient. A lot of times, you may not be getting enough iron, but not so much to become anemic. A lot of times a person's anemic is because they're B12 deficient and B12 is used to absorb iron. And B12 is consisting of an intestinal intestinal bacteria. It's a trace mineral. Mostly made up of cobalt. Well, or cobalt is its assistant, I should say, because the cobalt helps synthesize it. And so your body does have it within the colon, in the intestine, and it's not readily available to you, so you have to get it on the outside. So most times animals have B12 in their body is because they've been in contact or they've consumed their excrement. That's right, they've eaten their feces or, or <laughs> somehow have absorbed some of their fecal matter. 
or you're eating part of or some of their fecal matter because you're eating so many different body parts of the animals, ridiculous. And so when you get B12 from animals, what they're not telling you is <laughs> you're getting it because those animals have consumed their excrement or you're getting in touch with their excrement. So that bacteria is still in or around that animal. You don't have to get it from there though. But they'll tell you, oh, vegetarians. So, you know, it's sad that I had to talk to somebody who's suffering from a form of anemia and then comes up with this crazy idea that you only can get it from animals, which is a farce. You can get the B12 in abundant amounts from blue-green algae. You can get it from mushrooms. You can get it from dandelion. <laughs> you know, people are weird. You can get it from bladder racks. Oh boy. What, what it taught me is we have a lot of ways to go. We have so much to share. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking very forward to just sharing this information. It put that bug back in me, so to speak. Or that good bacteria back in me. Where I'm like, yo, you know, we gotta have this build. And what I'm also gonna do, I'm gonna follow in the steps of my master teacher. I've decided to, Dr. Sabi. And I'm gonna take the people outside the country for an amazing healing experience in Costa Rica. I have a business partner and we have some property out there acres a resort that's already built up and access to herbs springs a whole lot of other stuff we're gonna talk about this tomorrow but I'm, go I'm gonna go there and I'm planning the first exodus holistic exodus is what I'm calling it I'm planning the first holistic exodus in the month of January in Costa Rica. What do you think about that? <laughs> so yeah, get ready for that. It's gonna be dope. You willing to go to Costa Rica? That's what's up. Yeah, so I got I got property out there. What a lot of people don't realize is we work hard, we grind, we make this bread so we can master death. And in order to master death in this existence, you're going to need some money. And so the only reason I work on getting this bread is so I can be able to do the things that I'm doing now. But because it's a ritual procession into the awakening, you can't make that transition unless you do it in the company of those sharing similar conscious that's why it's called the ritual procession into the awakening meaning it's inclusive of several consciousness the whole purpose of the book of the day which is the ritual procession into the awakening is to maintain your intelligence in the afterlife I don't know then he sat here before after. come on brother Playing around these white folks so long. Forgot how to use your melanin properly. But anyway. <laughs> and, and how about to say, then he made it? Oh, come on, bro. Nah, but bricks. But yeah, that's how we're gonna do it. Yo, P, I know you're holding out, but you got to do more vids. Even if you don't post them, you got to have them albums ready to go, bro. <laughs> Hakeem Feltman. I dig it, King. I got y'all tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to do... What time tomorrow? A real... I don't even know. That's a good question. What time do tomorrow? I'm going to do this kind of early. What's tomorrow? Tuesday? Yeah. Oh, I kind of want to do it in the evening, though. Maybe I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it around six. I ain't gonna lie to you. Do it around six o'clock. Six p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Nine p.m. Eastern Time. I'll do five o'clock. Five o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Y'all could expect me. 
Five o'clock tomorrow. Let's get it in. Yeah. Last call for lunch as far as that crypto course, insurance course, credit course showing you how to make monies off of credit, showing you how to make monies off of insurance. Revolving lines of credit, that is, that we're talking about. And of course, cryptocurrency. You're interested in purchasing that course? Get it for the discounted rate tonight at 120. Oh. Cool. We inside that week, Mark. You go hit me at brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. Leave your full name and your phone number. Always leave your phone number. If you're interested in getting that, we'll make sure we touch base with you to lock you in before the price goes up to $200. I did everything in my power to keep it as low as we can keep it for as long as we could. Yeah, 5 p.m. No, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Let's make sure we get that right. 5 p.m. West Coast Time. Pacific Standard Time. That's 8 o'clock Eastern Time tomorrow. I want to go into the dynamics of algae. I want to show you the plants you can literally eat and you won't have to eat nothing else. And I'm going to ask people, tell me what's, what's not in it that you can only get it from elsewhere. I triple dog dare you. And I'm just telling you these, so even if you a meat eater and you having your issues making the transition for whatever reason, what you understand is at least you know you'll be getting what you need. Because the whole thing about getting iron from meat is that it's heme iron, so it's carcinogenic. It's cancerous. And the whole reason you don't want to get the animal protein, because animal protein is high in sulfur-containing amino acids, especially if you're getting it from milk and other forms of dairy, then you got caseomorphine. So not only are you being drugged up, but sulfur-containing amino acids changes the body's pH, makes it acidic, and makes you vulnerable susceptible to wound cancer, prostate cancer, and diabetes, amongst many other things. So if my source of protein it's an accumulative poison, and my source of iron is an accumulative poison because I'm getting it from meat. It's inevitable that you have to die with injury. You have to finish this existence in injury, and it's become normalized. Oh, you get old, you have back pains. You get old, your bones get brittle. You get old, you have high blood pressure. You get old, you got kidney stones. You get old, you got hypertension. You get old, no. That's because you've been consuming those accumulative poisons that get in your body ASAP and start destroying. <laughs> what happened? I'm sorry, baby. So, yeah, that's all. I just want to give you sources. There got to be a point where you just be like, look, I don't. Cancer is a violent, violent disease. If you lost somebody to it, change your situation because your daughter your son shouldn't have to see you leave like that that's what we talking about i ain't saying that you'll never get sick i'm just saying you're lowering the probability and if you get sick man get, get a cold when you get older don't get no damn cancer man you don't want no wound cancer you don't want no prostate cancer you don't want diabetes diabetes another violent ass disease man we playing games but our, our elder generation has normalized living long enough to die in pain because the other part of that oh my grandmother lived to this yeah, I bet you she's taking a whole bunch of demon drugs to stay alive and I bet you she's nearly blind or got all sorts of ailments but we feel like we've crossed the finish line if we just live long enough man get my ass out of here at 50 if I'm gonna be living after 50 with disease I ain't got no time to be living with no damn disease and I mean that. I want out of this bitch. I ain't trying to be here after age 50 and sick. Nah, not at that age. Those are golden years, man. I think by that time, I would have accumulated so much knowledge being on this planet. Man, I want to be able to facilitate and execute. I shouldn't have to be like, man, I can't make children no more. I can't exercise no more. I can't play a pickup game of basketball no more. I can't exercise and work out. I mean, you got people so, so sick that they be 60, 70 years old, and it sounds crazy if you say, yo, you need to go work out. People be thinking if you 60, 70 years old, you shouldn't be working out because it's not safe. What kind of crazy information is that? 
yo, I want to enjoy myself. I still want to be strong. You know, I, I don't want to be 70 years old and some young boy think he going to lean on me. I should be able to still punch him to freak out. Not that I want to fight when I'm 70, but I should be able to still put my, throw those hands. I should be able to still catch a fade. You know what I'm saying? Or run the fade, I should say. I should be able to still run the fade if I'm 70 years old. You know what's sad, too? These, the, the males in our generation, man, that's why I know the high estrogen levels make them very effeminate. Because you got these brothers going out their way saying I'm photoshopping images of my body. <laughs> When anybody can go to my social media and see when I sometimes show people my workout and how intense it gets. They show, I show my daughter working out and she go hard. You can look at my daughter now and see it in, in, her, in her that she's muscular. My daughter works out. She hits push-ups like I hit push-ups. She does 600 sit-ups straight. She does planks five minutes at a time. Like, this is what we do. She does it, I do it. We grind. My whole family grind. We do lunges up a steep ass hill on La Cienega for for three blocks. If you could do it for three blocks, you a beast. Lunging up a hill, a steep hill for three blocks. Natural. Ab rolling. Ab rolling downwards from a hill. Get the ab roller and hit it. But what I'm supposed to do in the middle of a meat versus plant debate, I'm supposed to take my shirt off and tell people it's not Photoshop. Why, why men got to be like that in our community? And then the ones that, that know that is his body, they saying that I'm taking steroids. <laughs> no, I've mastered what people are calling protein. I get, I be getting my, I just be drinking green juices and I get the resources that I need that's bioavailable. So if I decide to exercise, they're on deck to build muscle. And that's why I be telling vegans, you should work out. Because if you're executing your vegan lifestyle properly, that is to say scientifically, then if you decide to work out, not only do you have a whole bunch of energy to do so, you'll build muscle quicker than any meat eater. That's a fact. Because I work out two times a week. I mean, vigorously, and it's fun, and I don't lose no energy, and my wife would tell you, the second I start doing any push-ups, I start swelling up, fact or fiction, I could just be minding my business, you always tell me, damn, that shit's crazy, I just do, I did 100 push-ups today, and took my shirt off, and went to get ready to shower, she was like, damn, that shit's crazy, so, you know, like, and she's the one that be taking those pictures most of the time when I post them. I ain't seen doing no damn Photoshop. I, I can't be in front of my wife telling her, you know, uh, do like them Instagram girls be doing and swell me up or slim me somewhere. <laughs> Yo, I ain't no damn Instagram female model swelling up my butt or something. <laughs> Making my waist extra thin and shit. Yo, to the point it looks inhuman. I'm not one of those. And then you see them people in, in person, you be like, they catfishing. They catfishing. <laughs> they catfishing. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm getting ready for this baby soon. But yeah, you could just look at son's skin and tell that he was sick. And you look at his attitude and his lack of patience and you could tell he wasn't in the right state of mind. That's why I ain't, I ain't entertain all that negativity. Because I can see the sickness and I can hear it. There's no reason for him to behave in that manner. Now as a grown man, he, he's older than me. Nigga this, nigga that, nigga, nigga, nigga. I'm like, damn, this guy is sick, man. He filled with mad poison. You talking to somebody so young. I'm way younger than you, G. Like, you supposed to talk to me better than that, even if you think I'm out of line. I did too, and then I got it. Hey, hey, I didn't see it, but I feel it. She said it don't count. Hey, Matt, show them your muscles. Let me see your muscles. Look at that. Hold it. Hold it right there. Hold it. Hey. Hey. Go ahead. <laughs> it's my little boxing baby. I'm 35. Somebody asked. How old I was. 
returning 36, August 10th. Yeah, family. But I love y'all tomorrow, 5 o'clock p.m. Oh, we get go to brother plijc45 at gmail.com. Forward your full name and phone number if you're ready to get that course. I mean, we got health courses available too, but the upcoming one is 120. I'm gonna talk to y'all. Love y'all so much. Go back to this family time. Family's on the court right now. Peace.